Hi, this is Marlene and a warm welcome from Glasgow, Scotland to all around the world. In this series of Marlene and Friends, I'll be sharing with you the most amazing group of people who have all the skills and expertise to make our world one of health and peace for all who live here, humans and non-humans alike. Hi, this week's compelling and heartwarming interview with my friend Dr John Kelly will surely change the way medicine continues to discount the development of cancer and diet. I would ask all of you to please, please share this video. It's just an incredible story. Stop feeding your cancer is one of the many important messages that all of us in this Marlene and Friends series are working hard daily to make the information mainstream. Dr John Kelly explains in our interview that he was like most of the medical profession, cynical, hardened, couldn't really care less about the whole goings on between nutrition and supposedly cancer. I adore and love Dr Kelly for his insight and courage to document his patients' outcomes healing their cancer by simply adopting the principles of our mutual and beloved friend Dr T. Colin Campbell's groundbreaking work in the China study. Dr Kelly is a wee gem and you will absolutely love him and his story. Hi, I'm Marlene Watson Tara in service for a healthy world. My guest today is just an incredible revolutionary friend, Dr John Kelly, who's a GP from Dublin and the author of the fantastic and much needed book, The Groundbreaking Stop Feeding Your Cancer. In this incredible book, Dr Kelly pre presents convincing evidence based on the experience of his own patients, which shows that cancer can be stopped in its tracks and even reversed into a dormant state. This allows sufferers to regain good health and lead normal lives. The core of Dr Kelly's approach is the discovery about a decade ago of a direct link between the consumption of animal protein and the development of cancer. Cancer cells need protein to divide and flourish, so when you cut off the supply of animal protein, you can stop the growth and spread of the cancer cells. You can literally starve the cancer into submission. So what Dr Kelly has done, he's put those findings into use in his own practice over the past nine years. He's documented the results. He is the first GP to do so in this part of the world. How lucky am I? And for that, I have huge admiration for him. Our mutual friend, Professor Colin Campbell's revolutionary work, which is over a decade old now, established this link between animal protein and cancer in such a compelling manner that it was so hard to ignore, but ignore it the medical profession did, possibly because it just seemed too simple an answer to what all the specialists saw as a very complex disease. Dr Kelly, a huge big warm hug and welcome to you. I applaud you for documenting your patient studies, your courage to continue against the backlash of cancer specialists who said preposterous when they heard about your trial. Well, I have to say first of all, in defense of all those poor doctors and specialists, that I was sort of one of them up to just a little over 10 years ago. Wow, that's incredible. Ten, ten years ago, I, I never heard of Colin Campbell. A little over 10 years. Wow. I never heard of him, and uh, his work was absolutely, I, I didn't know anything about it. And as far as nutrition was concerned, I thought, yes, it's important but others are looking after that, and that's not my affair. I, well, you know, we talk to patients and all that sort of thing, and, but I, I had no notion in the world. And had somebody given me a book to read about nutrition mm -hmm. and cancer, I probably would have done nothing with it. That's and okay. I just would have just said, well, you know, that's all very well, but that's, you know, it's for the cancer specialist to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really, it's a lesson for me because what actually changed it for me was just a, a chance. The chance was that I was at a funeral of a friend of mine who had died of cancer mm -hmm. and I simply, you know, uh, I figured that, that he was just that little bit too young to have died. Mm -hmm. at, the cancer, at that funeral, there happened to be this man, who was a sort of an icon of Irish science, he was a, a, a geneticist who actually, you know, has world renown, 
Sure. And uh, he uh, he was the Ar he was the the principal advisor to the Irish government on scientific matters for years. So he was really somebody that you had to. And I asked this fellow, you know, that I knew vaguely from college days. I asked him, "What uh, any good cancer cures coming up in the in the genetic pipeline?" And uh, uh, he just looked at me and he said. He said he looked a little bit annoyed with me, but uh, he, he took out a business card and he wrote on it the name of the China study by T. Colin Campbell. That's all he put. And then he said, if you want to know more about cancer, read that. Now, I, I you know, I took his business card he didn't, and I didn't talk to him anymore after that because he was talking to other people about other things. So that's how I... I, I, I was really a hardened, couldn't care less sort of cynical about this sort of ideas. And uh, here's this fellow giving me something, giving me a book. And I, I didn't really want to read it, but because he was <clears throat> a very important man and a, a, a sort of a, a person that you just couldn't ignore the man and just say, well, he knows nothing. Sure. I, I had to sort of say, well, okay. And so I went out and I bought the book. With a little bit of trouble because it was basically had, hadn't really come into Ireland at the time. Uh -huh. But I got it and I read it and I literally amazed. I was amazed. I said, wow, this is something I really wouldn't have dreamt about. It. And, I, and the idea of that, and that's what really, it would never have happened except for that. That's an that, incredible story. The, it, it was incredible for me. Incredible. incredible. And the idea that here, was something that made total sense. And I, I latched on to this idea of animal protein mm -hmm. and cancer. And that's, that's uh, you know, that, that was the, the beginning. That was his emphasis at the, ta at the time in the China study. Mm -hmm. uh, later in, he came more into all whole food, plant-based diet, yeah. which I'm thoroughly in favor of because it's, it's a natural descendant. But once you have something big and emotive like the cancer is called, mm -hmm. is not called, but it makes it grow, it makes cancer cells grow. Yeah. And so I felt bound to share it with my cancer patients mm -hmm. and I did and talked to them and you know I'm a good talker when I start, uh -huh. as a GP I was and I, I give them plenty of time and I talk to them and I tell them buy the China study and we'll, we'll work our way through it but go for it. Now I might, I might as well say that there was one uh, bit of animal protein that I had, um, you know, I didn't, I, I couldn't believe that it was really playing a, any part, and that was fish. Sure. <clears throat> now, with fish, even though it's sort of, it looks the same, and it's the same value nutritionally and all that sort of thing, but it wasn't my experience. I, I had worked in Mauritius, of all places. Mm -hmm. And I worked there as a young doctor, um, well, sort of young, about 29 or something like that, or 28. And this, in a big, big general hospital full of every sort of disease under the sun. And it took me about a month to realize I hadn't seen a cancer patient in all that time. So I, I presume they had a cancer hospital somewhere, yeah. but they didn't. And I asked, I said, well, where are all the cancer people? And they said, well, we don't get cancer in Mauritius. Now, that was extraordinary. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I didn't put two and two together at that time. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I, I didn't put it together. But quite later on, when I read Colin Campbell's book, I said, wow, that's that. And, and that would mean that I, I couldn't say that fish didn't. So I looked into it a bit and I saw that the Japanese also had a history of eating yes. an awful lot of fish and yes, were the most long-lived people in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked at it in the various parts of the world that eat that and in China, in areas like Colin, Colin Campbell's exper experiments with the, in China and his, his, uh, his, uh, his book dealt with that very much and uh, that showed that, you know, Diseases like cancer were about five times less frequent mm -hmm. than in the United States. 
and coronary heart disease something like 15 times. That was in many of the country parts of, of China. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's, so it sort of made sense to me. So I allowed my cancer patients to take fish a few times a week. And uh, I, said, I just told them that you know, it, makes, it made it much easier for them to persuade them to do it because it's a big deal to get somebody to go on. Even if they have cancer, they're, they're just likely to say, oh, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't do that. I, I, I love my food too much. And, you know, you'd sympathize a bit, but if, if you could eat fish, you could eat other things. You can eat rice, you can eat all sorts of other things, cereals of all sorts, and, and certainly you can get by. And after a lot of practice, you can become a whole food, plant-based diet person, totally. But to stop cancer growing, which is what it's all about for me, um, they, they, they do that, and the majority of them are, are not on, are, are not taking, uh, they are taking fish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, well, the, you know, the failure of the China study to translate research momentum into efficient, globally coordinated empirical testing is just a tragedy, right? Why has this testing not been done? Mm. It's not been done because of the same reason that uh, I didn't, I, I wasn't interested to begin with. In other words, doctors are. They're, I won't say that their minds are totally closed. They know nothing about it and they don't want to know about it because it's somebody else's problem. Right. And you just don't take on problems that aren't yours. Mm -hmm. And you don't nudge your way into some... Even among specialists, I mean, they're, they don't know very much outside their own specialty. As a matter of fact, they're dangerous in that way. Sure. And they're, they're so blocked in that, oh, that can't be true because... Thomas down the road, mm -hmm. he, uh, he's a specialist in that and he says all that. And so it's a very, very, and that's why it never really, and then there's such a thing as <clears throat> collegiality where people, you know, they go along with their, their colleges, their royal college of this mm -hmm. and their royal college of that. And, you know, nobody has a right to say anything against that. Exactly. Uh, you know, nobody would uh, pay any attention. Like, uh, if I were to write to the Lancet, they would look at the thing and say, well, you're not a specialist of this, this, or this, and they wouldn't print, they wouldn't print it. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of stuff is ruined like that. So, one of my great hopes for the future is this, is Joe Biden, and yes. the Vice President of the United States, who has devoted this coming year to cancer. Now, I, uh, a number of people have written to him, a huge number of people, I'm sure. I wrote to him also. I think he's a genuine sort of person. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling, and, and I hope it's true, but I have a feeling that Joe Biden could play a huge role because Absolutely. he's like my, 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 my professor of, of genetics. In other words, he's a very important person. Exactly, yeah. You don't say, oh, no, we won't be interested in that. But Joe Biden could focus the attention of America yeah. very, very, very easily. And I, I think, uh, I know that if a lot of people are looking at us and wondering how to gain his attention because mm -hmm. it's very hard. So I, I wrote him a letter too. <laughs> Fantastic. And, you know, as did I, as did Jim Hicks, our mutual friend. So, you know, I'm sure you yourself, Colin Campbell and Jim Hicks will have a meeting at the White House. And that's hugely exciting because in the next 11 months, I think, as you've just said, Dr. Kelly, big things are going to up, <clears throat> open up for your work, for Professor Colin Campbell's work and everyone else that's been doing this for decades. You know, how, how has the medical profession responded to your book, Stop Feeding Cancer? I, I you know, I, I used to go to society meetings and all uh -huh. that sort of thing. And I could talk to individual doctors, that, but when I talked to groups of them, they would say, well, look, we, 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 can, we can talk about that afterwards or something of that sort. When I talked to individual doctors, you'd sort of get them interested, but then they'd sort of say, well, you know, all, if there was any truth in that, they, you know, the, the specialists would be into that. They couldn't be ignoring that. 
The trouble is, yes, they did, and yes, they could. But, and I, I could not break down, even in, in my own work, my colleagues at work, there were five of them there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of them is doing a bit of it now, but uh, the others were skeptical. Now they're skeptical, they didn't say, oh, no, you know, be out of respect for me, maybe. But they didn't jump on the bandwagon, and... Uh, and that's the general problem. And they're just not prepared. They've been so much work on their plate, and they're, they, oh, that's somebody else's work. Let them do it. Yeah. And, and it, it could go on for generations. In, in my book, I brought up the, the subject of, say, bloodletting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and of course. It was a big, big, big deal. It took one of the big, only specialties for a long time. And uh, it lasted for. 3,000 years, yeah. and it's, it's terrible. I mean, it was killing people rather than anything else. So that's the answer. Yes, it is, absolutely. And you're going to be a huge key player in bringing about change. There's no doubt about it. Like one of my other heroes, Lyle Watson, you know, before his time, uh, I know you, you're a fan of all his work as well. And when you're presenting the, you know, information to the state the status quo that they don't want to hear they just look the other way i know because we are exactly the same and we don't have doctor in front of our name sometimes maybe that's even easier or sometimes it's more difficult but we've had huge success you know with patients with cancer including my own family you know would you like to share some of your patients outcomes because they're just incredible yeah it's <clears throat> to say i i dealt with in the years that I've been doing this, I dealt with about 70 patients. Now, th there is always a problem in presenting cases, individual cases. I could have put down 70 cases and said, look at that, look at that. But what I also allowed my patients to do was to take whatever thing they were being given, mm -hmm. you know, by their specialists. So, say somebody present presented with cancer of the prostate. Sure. Uh, you know, a lot of them are they, they very slow growing. Mm -hmm. A lot of them can be helped by little implants and mm -hmm. radiation treatments and so on, and by surgery. And um, you know, you, you you could put them on on the diet, and they get well, and they feel well, and everything. But uh, you know, you could just as easily say, well, that's due to the other treatment. So that was the flaw. Now, in, in a sense, if cancer of the breast, you know, they're improved a lot, mm -hmm. the sort of results they're getting. And yes, they have a lot of failures too. Now, I could, all, uh, I, I could, could count 40 or, or so, 50 of them were, would be in that category. But then there were some, there were really some, uh, you know, hugely impressive ones, mm -hmm. for me anyway. Yeah. that I expected. Even in cancer of the prostate, which I remember, he was a man or in his 60-ish, his 60s, and great golfer, and he was, you know, he really, a very healthy person, and he, he, he had a little problem with the waterworks, and he ignored it, he said, oh, well, I'm, because I'm getting a little older, and that sort of thing. And in the end, he went along to a, a specialist. You know, he came to me first, and I said, yeah, I don't like the sound of that too much. I think we'll have to send you to a specialist. But I said, if, if this turns out positive, I want you to come back here and make sure you come back, because I want to tell you how to cure it. And uh, even, you know, go over the head. Uh -huh. Don't tell your specialist if you like, but come back, I want to talk to you. So he went in and he had a scan done and this was bad. He had the capsule of the prostate was yeah. already broken. He had bone secondaries. He had all his lymph glands were up. Yeah. And the, the, actual, the specialist actually telephoned me uh, after seeing him and he said, look, that case you sent me, he's not going to make it. He has no chance. Mm -hmm. But uh, he said, I'll do what I can. We will just put him on injections. You know, just the hormonal injections every three months. And, but that was just uh, with no expectation. He gave the patient very little hope also. Mm -hmm. So the patient came back to me like I told him. And I told him about the China study and I told him about 
about what my own beliefs of it, and I said that within a very short time, you will feel a lot, lot better because your cancer is going to stop growing. And uh, he, um, he, he, he was delighted to grasp any, any straw. And uh, his, his, his uh, PSA was oh, about 150, 160, but it was because of the secondaries around the place that he was so... He was such a bad call. Well, he had no trouble after that. He suddenly began to feel better, and he uh, he still had because the tumor had burst the capsule. Yeah. He had still problems with his waterworks, but that continued like that, and I we didn't interfere. But after about four or five years of going on like that, the the consultant decided that, <clears throat> that, you know, just interfering with his life a lot, coming to go so frequently, and so he, he thought maybe he should, he would do a little surgery to make that a little better. Unfortunately, I, I don't think it was a good call, because <clears throat> what happened was that after that, he developed uh, about 40 secondaries in the bone, and he came back to me and told me, and I said, well, go back on the diet. I mean, you are on the diet. If you're on the diet, watch those secretaries. They'll go away. Mm -hmm. They won't grow. That's what it's all about. They don't grow. Secondaries come because little bits of cancer get into the bloodstream after mm -hmm. surgery, and they can go anywhere. But with this, it stops the cancer growing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not calling them carcinogenic. I'm calling them just the meek the cancers grow. Okay. Why? Who knows? Maybe it's genetic thing, but cancer cells are different to our own cells uh -huh. in a very, very marked way. I mean, they can replicate away and away and never stop replicating, whereas normal cells can divide and multiply, but well controlled by genes. So when genes are damaged, then animal protein will make them grow. Mm -hmm. The cancers grow, and, and uh, uh, you know, I look forward to more. The more uh, when they do more research, as they are going to do. Colin Campbell is now setting up a very important study in uh, Rochester. At least that's the plan, mm -hmm. and he's fundraising at the moment. And um, I think that's going to be immensely important, especially if we get, as I think we can, we will something from Joe Biden on that. Yeah. If we can get him to focus in on that. I, I, I refer everybody to the China study because that, that's, even though it can be a bit heavy for some people, mm -hmm. I say, well, concentrate on the experiments with the rats. The rat experiments were absolutely amazing, scientifically, in, undisputable. I mean, how can anybody not look at these things and say, you can switch cancer off or you switch it on by putting more animal protein or less in the diet. It's, it's a done deal. It, there's no doubt in my mind that these are, that's the one thing that if, whenever I get any doubts as to what is going on, or is, 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 there, is this really a lot of nonsense or not, yeah. then I look back and I say, what about the rats? That's How right. That I mean, I mean we're, they're, and we're, you know, it's, it's, it's foolish to, mm -hmm. to, to even question. Sure. I mean, I have clients right now who have brain tumours shrinking, you know, chemo didn't work, surgery didn't work, you know, the second tumour shrunk by 50% as well. Yes. So, you know, and, the, you know, what do I do? I don't have magical powers. I change their diet to a whole food plant-based diet, the same as i done with my brother, whose PSA, as you know, was 580, which was huge. The, the highest I'd ever worked with was 70. So, yeah. you know, none of the wars are won in a single action, and it takes vision and courage and planning by so many to bring about the truth and I think what you're predicting um, we're gaining ground the revolution is in sight you know and it's hugely exciting because yes. what you have documented in your book you know I mean every single person should should have this book in their home and start to educate themselves because as we all know the only thing that brings about change is education so you know, um, I think you're incredible and, you know, all your patients, I'm sure they must have had a celebratory party for you. <laughs> well, 
it's it has been you know great for it's it's wonderful. It empowers patients mm -hmm. to cure themselves. Yes, that's the beauty of And they are that's that's a really big thing. They yeah. sort of feel now it's up to me. Mm -hmm. And you will do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with you. Brain tumors are. I, I've had, I've had very good experience with brain tumors, mm -hmm. and um, I I did put one into the book that was a bit negative in the sense that he went off his his diet and just to show how yeah. what can happen. And he was one of these rugby people. <laughs> Scotland uh, were beaten the other day. I know. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, he, uh, he he used to love rugby, and he was a big physical guy, and he was only twenty nine or so, uh -huh. something like that. And uh, he was, he you know, he he was long gone almost. He started having fits and uh, convulsions on a regular basis, and he was put on one thing and the other chemotherapy, all sorts of things. They couldn't operate on him because he had to, it was too near some vital centers in the brain. And uh, anyway, he came in to me and because, he, with his father, Ross's father came in, but he sort of, uh, he said, well, you know, basically, he hated having these compulsions. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do anything really with them. He was getting them so frequently and there the, were the big thing with shakes and all that. Grand mal. Now, I told him, I, he, uh, when I said give up all animal protein, he, he looked at me and he said, are you crazy? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't give up animal protein in a hundred years. And I said, well, you're going to die. And he said, well, okay, I'm going to die. Yeah. But I, 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 I couldn't give up that old protein. And he used to, you know, from they ate big steaks after the matches and they drank and all that sort of stuff. And I, and I, and he was having so many of these convulsions that practically every second day he'd get a serious one. It'd last about ten minutes and scare him and everybody around him. And they were very bad. So I said, look. Make a deal with you. If you stop animal protein completely mm -hmm. for a month, I if you if you can if your if your convulsions don't stop, then you can go back on it. But if they are, if they go away, you have to stay on the diet. Did so you? He 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 looked at me and he said. He re with great regret, but he couldn't now go out with the lads anymore because he was getting these convulsions. Yeah. And he, he couldn't ex he couldn't go out anymore, so he agreed to do it. And his convulsions stopped just within approximately two weeks, and he had no more convulsions. And I mean, he was absolutely thrilled. Now he was on anti-convulsants, but he had mm -hmm. been on those before yeah. all the time. So. His convulsions stopped completely, and the years then began to go by, and he was beginning to feel an awful lot better. And he was back working, and he had been, he was back. He used to work with his father, and but he was feeling well, and he's been, he was beginning to be interested in back in his, you know, his friends from the past, and go to matches a little bit. And the years rolled by, and he stayed with it, and then he got more involved, and he began to drink a lot, and then everybody was eating steaks and things after the matches, and he started to do it. And suddenly, he, his convulsions came back again, and, and he began to get twitches and all sorts of things. And uh, he, at first, he... I said, look, you can't do it and, and live. And he, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't stop. He got a stroke in the end, even though he was only 30-something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, you know, he, he just wouldn't go back on the diet. He refused. He just wouldn't do it. And I couldn't. He, he just wouldn't come to see me anymore. Yeah. So about on the good side, I mean, for brain tumors, uh, you know, I, I, it was absolutely brilliant because brains, 
brain tumors don't usually metastasize, they don't get secondaries around the body or anything. So, it, it, you know, uh, there was always a good time. I didn't know if it would work at the beginning when yeah. I was starting, but it worked so well yeah. that I was amazed. And the good thing about it is that you begin to feel better very quickly, two weeks and absolutely will bring you up and sort of say, I feel better, yeah. what do you think? And I, at first, I didn't know what to say to that because I didn't want to sort of say, well, look, if you're cured already. But once the cancer stops growing, the pressure starts grow, stops. And you, you actually, the brain adjusts and mm -hmm. they keep their little, the cancer there, maybe, uh, yeah. but it's not active anymore. Mm -hmm. And as long as they stay away from these things, mm -hmm. they're fine. Yeah, I've seen it so many times, too, with clients that have had them. They all clear, the cancer's gone, they yeah. great, wonderful, and then they're off on holiday and they're drinking and eating all sorts again and you know, <clears throat> just exactly what you said. You know, but yeah. I think what you've done, Doctor Kelly, you're such a pioneer and you know, you've presented a challenge to the cancer specialists of this country as well. Yeah. One yeah. which they have completely ignored as we all know. And um, you know, for me the belief that the body is a self healing organism is just Sure. beyond doubt you know so sometimes the con the constraints of medicine you know are not yes. helpful um whereas you know you've opened up a whole new era i mean it's just phenomenal i just absolutely love and adore your passion for you know really being a trailblazer and you know you're such a charismatic caring gp and over 40 nearly 50 years of, of working taking care of people so i bow down to you in admiration now Will you share with us? You must have a... I could speak to you forever, but we're just about out of time. And I want you to, um, you know, because cancer's not a, you know, it's a very heavy topic to be discussing, but you yeah. must have a funny story during your career or something you want to share with us all. Um, I, I, the only stories I have are stories that my patients tell me. Uh-huh. You know, they, but these are people usually that have just got over their cancer. They... They tell me funny stories occasionally. I don't have a big hoard of funny <laughs> stories. As a matter of fact, I don't keep them in my head. <laughs> That's unusual for Irish people. <laughs> Colin Campbell's work, of who I would like to see get the Nobel Prize. Oh, me too. I said that to you, didn't well, I? It will happen. Yeah. But, um, yeah, okay. I know this one is a little bit dicey, but I'll tell it anyway. <laughs> it's, it's about cannibals. Uh -huh. You've heard of them. Now, they're, you know, they're in their own way, this is part of their tradition, so we have to accept, okay, they are cannibals, there are, there were anyway, cannibals. And um, the father and the son were walking, or just going for a walk one day. The son was only about eight years old. And uh, anyway, they, it was in Africa, and they were black, and uh, they went around the corner, and they saw this, blonde woman tied to a tree and the little boy said look dad look 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 at uh, look at that blonde woman what do you think do you think we could eat her <laughs> and and the, the father looked at him and he said well i don't know i think we should consider uh, we could bring her home and maybe maybe we could eat your mother <laughs> Very good, I love it. <laughs> I don't know if that's, that's, if that's permissible to rock. Well, of course it is. It's fun. You're saying it in fun. You know, but what's so beautiful about your soul is, you know, you're sharing the same objective with so many people around the world who are tackling the limitations of convention. You know, they're stimulating debate. They're speeding up the search for the truth. And that's why I've put this series together because I'm very blessed to teach and do what I do. That keeps me well, my family well, my friends well, and to have such incredible friends on this series, we're all going to push out together, and that really excites me. So, Dr. John Kelly, I want to thank you from the bottom of my soul for being a trailblazer, and I look forward to getting together with you sometime soon. Thank you very much, and it's been my pleasure to talk to you and to talk to anybody else okay. that will listen. Thank Fantastic. you so much. Fantastic. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.